Ball Beyond Borders. How are you? I'm good in yourself. Yeah, I'm solid, man. You know, it's Monday. We over here getting right. after it. You feel me? Hey, it's good weather too. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's it's active out there. It's active out there on the streets. You know, we live right now. I'd have to do what I usually be doing. You know what I'm saying? No, you good, Daryl. If they knock it, that's a good thing. Because, you know, they could be clanking. Right, right. <laughs> We're on First Avenue, everybody. You know what I'm saying? It's active out there. But, um, but yeah, so Reconciliation Tour, um, you know, screening or premiering the film tomorrow, Ellis Pavilion, um, T-Mobile Park. It's also um, one of the fundraisers for Baseball Beyond Borders. Before we get into the trailer, which we will play here, man, tell everybody a little bit about yourself and Baseball Beyond Borders. Yeah, so I'm the brand manager, the brand ambassador at Baseball Beyond Borders. Um, I started off as coaching. Fuki got me, he finagled me into coaching. Um, It was a bet that if I'm moving here from, um, I I was by coast between uh, Brooklyn and uh, San Francisco at the time. And um, I was dating my my now wife. And he was like, if you get engaged, you have to come coach with me. And I was just like, "Mm, yeah, cool. And then as soon as I got engaged, he sent me that text was like, yeah, we start in May. (laughs) So that was about that was about eight, eight, nine, eight, eight years ago. Um, And then since then, I was a coach from the 15 year old team, the eight year old team, the 18 year old team. And then um, then I wanted to really focus on marketing. Um, and professionally and personally, and that was my dream. So he was just like, yeah, you can just be the brand brand ambassador here. So um, I've been doing a brand ambassador role for about three to four years. So Okay, well, good stuff. Yeah. Let's take a look right now. This is the Reconciliation Tour. This is a trailer of the film premiering tomorrow at T-Mobile Park. A team really just means, like, all the people just working together to do stuff. And I really like being on the team because I can't beat nobody with just only me. I need help. You're in the heart of the South. We're here at the John and Vera Mae Perkins Foundation. Um, we're here running a baseball camp, working with uh, youth from West Jackson community, just trying to inspire them. The history of baseball in the black community started with the Negro Leagues. And with that, it created opportunities for community to come together. It was a piece of the culture. Baseball is an opportunity that really gives, it socializes, it really allows ourselves to create a social norm um, in our communities that we once had that preserves a cultural legacy. I think a lot of the kids that we worked with while we were here had never really played baseball before, Um, especially some of the younger ones. uh, You're kind of just introducing the game to them. You you, kind of see it through their eyes for the first time and, you know, they they hit in a batting cage and they take a couple swings and they make contact and then... It's It's an honor to be there for that. You know, our work continues to change the landscape of baseball and softball, um, particularly the systemic structure that's in place. We have to continue to find ways to uplift communities to really see baseball and softball as a viable option. Um, One, because it's the only sport we've ever owned, but two, it's also our ability to preserve the cultural legacy because we know play can heal. Athletic opportunities affirm the dignity of the people. And quicker than we know that we as good as others and that they can be like you and I can be like them and we can be like each other. That's a good time. Let's play together. Come play for us. I mean, it's easy to bond with us. It's easy to bond with me. So I mean, it's kind of like a second family. Family! You are able to bring kids um, to a different community like Jackson and and then take them to Montgomery, Um, you're starting to expose them to voices that that haven't been heard. We're seeing a lot of of the struggle of the civil rights movement and and we saw it in Jackson, we'll see it in the museums in in Montgomery. I just wanted them today to realize you have an obligation. You've been told, you've been challenged. What you do with it is up to you, but you can't say no one ever asked you to get out there and try.
Man, these kids, I'm just telling you, it's real exciting here, but it's also a big eye-opener for our young kings from Seattle to really see something different. I'm just, I'm just hopeful that our young people will take something away from this, you know, even more than baseball. Just from the two days that we experienced here in Jackson, you know, what I saw is I saw inspiration. I, I saw hope. Um, I saw uh, an ability to be something. Come out and play with me is a beautiful thing. Let's play together. All right, Reconciliation Tour, the trailer. Come on, watching that, four minutes right there, but, you know, kind of putting the experience this summer uh, together, man. How were you impacted by that trip down south? Um, it was a great impact because, one, I went down not expecting anything from it. Um, I know it's going to be a great, uh, a great lesson. Uh, I was going to learn a lot. But I think when I went down there, I learned much more than what I thought I was. And then it brought back a lot of memories for me because um, my my grandmother, she was a part of the National Urban League for like 30, 40 years. She was like the vice president for like 30 years. So growing up around like Vernon Jordan and Ron Brown, um, I used to see my dinner parties. Like they was like my uncle, godfathers, whatever. And then, um, so seeing that, and then like actually walking into like the Legacy Museum and then seeing like Vernon Jordan's face and then seeing like, um, other people's face that I would see, Earl Graves, that I would see, like I would see at dinner parties because my, my father, my grandfather worked with Earl Graves. And I just like, I broke down. Like it was a lot. And then seeing that and then seeing the different things that you saw in the museum in terms of like the lynchings and um, the sand in the jars, like it was a lot. It was, it was a lot. It was a very emotional experience. And then experience in Jackson, we went to Jackson we joke about this often. <laughs> is we went down there and we we we, we um, had a water, a water bowl effect. We never even heard of that before. Like you couldn't use the water. Um, the only thing you use the water for is the shower. Like you couldn't drink anything. Um, so experiencing like that and getting the kids to experience that, I think opened up their eye, their eyes the difference between the, the deep south and um, in Seattle. So yeah, yeah. I know one thing for sure is that. There's the South, and then there's the heart it's, of the South. It's different because my mom, my mom, my parents are from North Carolina. Yeah, so it's different from North Carolina. Like, it's that's Jackson. what I be telling people too. <laughs> like, different. My 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 dad's side of the family they're from North Carolina as well. Uh, Big shout out, pops down there in Rocky Mount. Yeah, and I be saying that like North Carolina and Mississippi, different. my friend, yeah. it's night and day. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I mean, the thing is, is like. Mississippi is, is like a, it's a time machine, bro. Mm -hmm. And, you know, when you go to downtown Jackson, it, it looks like, it, I mean, the buildings there, it looks like yeah. it's still stuck in the 60s or 70s, man. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's wild. What What is some of the biggest things that you want um, the, the young boys and girls who participate in Baseball Beyond Borders to take away? Uh, just not to take any of this for granted. Um, this, is a, this was an opportunity. This was a platform that they were able to experience and use. Um, this is a learning experience that schools don't teach um, and, and, and they probably wouldn't know about if they didn't go on with us. Um, this is also, um, I want them to take this and pass it on to their their generation, to their friends. So I, I, I hope that when school started, it was like, oh, we went to Jackson, we, we went to Montgomery, Alabama, and we experienced this and we saw this um, because it was a life-changing experience. Um, and those teen, they got the experience when we were teenagers. We, we're grown men in 30s and our 40s, and we, we're just experience, experiencing it. And it was a life-changing experience for us also. But for them to get the, get this information and get this experience this young, it looks it, it's amazing. And I want them to take it away and not take it for granted and really share that experience um, in whoever they encounter. And I think that's what you're going to get um, tomorrow at the premiere. You're going to get some of the kids sharing their experience and how it touched them from when they came back to Seattle. Um, they didn't see anything really the same. Like they, they kind of saw it differently, kind of changed for them. So, yeah.
Right. Man, this is dope. And now, um, if there's any tickets still available, and even if not, you can know you can donate, you can give because we believe in giving over here. Right. Uh, what's the website? The website is baseballbeyond.org. Um, they're still available. You can still register. You can still give. You can give with money, time, um, That's right. anything. That's Just, right. We talked about yeah. that. Just give. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Physically, monetarily, you can give t- all of that. So, um, yeah, visit baseballbeyond.org uh, and um, register on the link. And then uh, the other thing is if you come to the, uh, to the premiere, we have a, a baseball ticket for you. So, yeah. That's an so you get to go to the game too, yep. huh? Yep. All right. Then so. it, then it, then it, then a playoff push. So yeah. Yeah. No, this is yep. big. Um. Yeah, and I know the the goal is twenty five thousand. Mm-hmm. So, uh, let me get the camera here. So you feel free, and this is a just one of those tax things too. Tax. <laughs> you know, people don't ever want to pay no tax. Tax whatever. If anybody <laughs> out there. We got one ticket for twenty five thousand for you too, or you know what I'm saying. Uh, you want to bring somebody with you? Two tickets for twelve thousand five hundred. Right. You know, all the way down to you can show up with nothing and right. just give a lot of positive vibes and hugs. But you know, if you don't ask, man, you don't get. So right. if you out there with twenty five racks that you want to give to an amazing cause, right. you know what I'm saying? Go to baseballbeyond.org. And go ahead and sign up and go ahead and make that $25,000 donation. So then everything else, because, you know, some of us, you know, we're giving five, fives and tens. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. We can make them fives and tens, the cherry on top. Somebody come through with the 25. Yep, yep, yep. <laughs> there it is. Yep. Kamal Ford, Baseball Beyond Borders. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. I appreciate it. Good stuff. We're going to take a quick.